Click, click. Hello everyone, this is Take from BigHeadTaco.com and I'm here in a super cool store which is Leo's Camera Supply in Vancouver. There, there aren't that many stores like this here. I almost said Camera Girl. I don't have Camera Girls. My mystery cinematographer, but if, I'll say HZ. HZ, if you just do a kind of a quick, can you do a pan or not? I don't know, but this is Leo's Camera Supply. One of the coolest stores, I think, in Western Canada and definitely in Vancouver. It's kind of the old school. All the guys that work here are camera nerds, and I say that in the most respectful way. But we're here uh, to review, sort of review, two cameras. But I have a special guest. So I'm in Leo's, but I have a special guest here. So Gord, if you can come on in. Nice to see you again, Gord. Good to meet you um, again. This is Gord. Uh, he, we, I'm gonna call you the West Coast Fuji guy. Is that is that alright? Sure. Okay. No, well, we can, I, the fist let's pump let's do. I don't work for Fuji, <laughs> but we'll do the fist pump. But uh, Gore, I have to. yeah, yeah, you you have to, right? Right. But I don't. But that um, Gore, we met at the uh, the uh, little the photo walk event. Right. At um, down in Gastown. Down in Gastown. On a rainy night in Vancouver in February. And yeah, exactly. I had a and chance to try out the XT1. The, 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 the XT1. Ones. Yeah, exactly. And um, it was a great event. Mm -hmm. And hopefully Fuji will do more of these. We are indeed planning on doing more of these in more locations across Canada because we've been very successful and we have a very fervent follower and they really want to try out new gear without having to be so. able to put it onto their own cameras. I think so. So we're really excited about that. Sometimes we, we're not sure exactly how it's going to look, whether it's going to be a, a bunch of big events or they're yeah. going to be fairly small. Smaller. I think there was uh, 20 or 30 extra people. That's what I heard Yeah, we actually Revolver uh, that yeah. uh, you booked a certain amount and more showed up, which really shows the popularity of the Fuji cameras and also people wanting to kind of be so with the brand yep. and meet Fuji guys and the ex photographers. Absolutely. So um, anyway, so thank you so much for coming to the video. I, I wanted a little bit more of um, expert advice because a lot of my followers know I don't get too technical, mm -hmm. but there's a few things I wanted to go over. But um, here I have um, uh, the XC2 yep. with the standard 18 to 55 with the kit lens. The kit lens mm -hmm. f2.8 f4 on my blog and I mentioned on my YouTube videos. I think this is the best kit lens. Um, in the market, it doesn't matter what format, yeah. Canon, Nikon, full frame, micro four thirds, um, super fast. People don't realize 2.8 to f4 is only a stop difference. So you only lose one stop when you zoom in. Uh, um, uh, the optical image stabilization built in, mm -hmm. aperturing built in, mm -hmm. um, fantastic lens. It's a step above a lot of the other kit lenses that I many of the so. other brands offer. Because we, we do offer some of our cameras with an XC lens, which is a little bit of a step down from yes, this lens. Yes, of course. You're losing out on aperture speed as well as yeah. some of the other bells and whistles. But arguably, I agree with you that that's a great lens, and that's a great lens to go on that camera because now you've got a really powerful camera that's nice and compact that's for right. travel photography. That's right. And I'm actually going to do a weigh-in soon, so stay tuned. So yeah, we'll check the weight. But you're right; it's compact this way. If you lose the the the, the, uh, the hood there, because then you have to replace. That's it. true. That's true. But uh, actually, it handles flare very well as well. In mm -hmm. fact, I use this um, on all my reviews, even and against the prime lenses. Mm -hmm. To me, this is my reference lens for Fuji. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what I'm testing. The 55, uh, 56 Prime APD, the Prime wide angles. I use this as the as uh, the reference because to me this, uh, yeah, this is the best uh, kit lens. I mean, some of the Sony's or other brands, it's just a piece of plastic, mm -hmm. and they're horrible. And you go on Craigslist and you just see tons of people just trying to offload. Right. People do try to sell this lens, but it's still four or five hundred. Like they're trying to get their money back, and it's worth right. that much. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. But you guys bundle it well with other kits, and it really drops the price down. U.S. one of myself, I think, three hundred bucks yeah, bundled it, with the XC2. Yeah, generally speaking, if you buy the kit lens with the camera, either the XC2 or now the XT1 yeah. is available. It's usually about a three hundred dollars saving. Yeah, it's you quite know, and that big... lens right now here in Canada sells for seven hundred dollars on its own. Yes, so yes. So when you buy it as part of a kit, you pay a four hundred dollar premium, but you're saving that uh, that extra three hundred dollars. Of course, excellent. But we're not here to talk about this. So this is actually my reference kit. Okay. Right. I'm referencing this. Um, this is really the mon. Uh, on my Instagram and on my uh, blog, everyone's been asking about this 16 to 55. Yes. Like, let's get the full name here. The <laughs> very long here. Six, XF 1655 F 2.8 R L M W R. So yep. it's weather uh, resistant. Right. And 77 mil filter. I mean, this is one big honking lens. It is, but when you compare that because of the fact that it's got that f2.8, yes. compare that to any full framed version of that same yes. 24 to 85-ish equivalent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. f2.8, and you're looking at significantly lighter, and you'll do the weigh-in a bit later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, this is a great uh, kit lens that goes well with that uh, with the X-T1 
and this is a silver graphite version. And it's great, a great camera for, for those of us that live in Vancouver uh, to be able to go out and take shots on, on days as we happen to have here uh, today where it's a little bit overcast and drizzling uh, water happening. Exactly. Now, you mentioned, okay, we don't necessarily want to pour water onto it, right. but uh, shooting out in the rain. Yep. Um, I find that for myself personally, if I shoot in the rain, I usually have an umbrella or a hat. I don't really want to get this wet. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I see more of this as an advantage for places that have high humidity. So let's say you go to Mexico and it's super humid, you're out shooting in the beach, mm -hmm. and then you go indoors to the hotel and then it's super cold and air conditioned. And most people with regular cameras, you either put it into a Ziploc bag and let the temperature equalize, or, I mean, that's pretty much all you can do, right? With this right. thing here, it can handle the condensation, it can handle a little bit of wetness, yep. um, a bit of a windstorm, a little bit of a, if you go halfway into the water, obviously you're not dripping it, but if it gets a little bit wet, yep. that's to me more than that, because I don't see too many people shooting and pouring, True. pouring type rain, right? Yeah. Well, we happen to get a lot of drizzle here in Vancouver, so yes. that's kind of what it's like as well. But yeah, you're right, it's good, it's good situations like that where you are working with higher, higher humidity, humidity yeah. or in situations where there's a little bit of dust uh, potential. Happen. Yeah, so I think that's really the, the great, mm -hmm. I mean, it says WR, right, weather resistant, and right. people assume weather meaning rain, but really it could be dust, it could be humidity, and any of those things, Absolutely right? Absolutely true. So um, anyways, um, let's just see here. Um, one of the things I want to talk about, uh, we talked about a little bit too, is, um, okay, you know what, let's just do the weigh-in. Sure. I have my handy-dandy tracker here, so let's do a weigh-in. Um, so this is the XT1 silver graphite. Right. Not that it's any heavier than the non-silver graphite. Absolutely, graphite the same. silver. Well, sorry, might, silver graphite is, was correct. Pro probably, uh, but it might be a little bit because there are some additional coatings on the top, and that's what makes the silver graphite potentially a little bit more durable than the all-black version. Okay, so it says 1.2 kilos, and this is the real-world weight. Okay, with yep. the with the leather the strap, strap, the battery, the memory card. Okay, oh, so it's one point. Forget the memory card because that yeah. can add a lot of uh, weight. <laughs> that's to right. Overall. So it's 2.6 pounds for my American viewers or 1.2 kilograms so right. keep that in mind there all right and now let's reset this now I have the artisan and artist uh, strap on your beautiful silk strap I could do a little bit of a name drop for them yeah. they sent this to me to review beautiful strap um, so let's weigh this here this is it's jumping between 0.6 and 0.7 kilograms okay and or 1.5 pounds, so that's about a, that's that's more than a pound lighter right. for this kit yep. versus, versus this kit. So um, I guess it comes down, you know, people are saying, should I get this or that? Uh, we talked a little bit about it. I mean, this is a rangefinder inspired or rangefinder style. Absolutely true. Right? Yes. You could see that the viewfinders on the on the top left corner, which all the old classic rangefinders were like. This is kind of in the middle with a little hump, very SLR-like. Correct. Um, Performance-wise, this is an insane performer. The nice thing about the X-T1 is because you now have all of the controls on the top deck, so you can actually control a lot of the things very quickly and easily. That's right. Like the, 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 on the, around the ISO dial, yes. there's actually the drive button. So instead of having to dive deep into the menus to be able to change to yes. either film exposure bracketing or ISO bracketing, you can do that directly on the command dial and see with the camera Of course, off, and you can see straight down. Exactly. And uh, me coming from a film background, even with the camera turned off, you can look at it and go single shot, ISO 1600, let's just say I picked a certain shutter speed, right? So let's say 1 right. 500th, uh, exposure compensation minus whatever, and then you can see your aperture. You can actually see all your major settings other than say white balance before you even turn the camera on. Correct. Which is awesome. Yes. And the XE2 with this particular kit lens, you get part of that. You don't get all of it. You do. Yes. Be, you are able to see the shutter speed that you've got selected, yes. any exposure compensation that you have going on. But with this particular lens, because there's no numbers on the aperture ring, you can't tell exactly what your. I've whined aperture about that. I know. I know the aperture shifts, but. Anyways, that's for another video. I don't, I don't mind if you have it at 2.8 and you zoom out to 55 and now it's at f4. Right. I think once people get that in their heads, I, w I would rather have it dedicated. I don't like it spinning because, you know, without looking, if I go like this with this lens, I know it's wide open 2.8. Correct. And if I go this way, I know it's wide open. I mean, it's stopped, stopped down at, well, actually, it, go, it jumps to 8, doesn't it? Actually, that's kind of cool. It's right 8 or it goes to 22. So that's kind of why I, I like this. So anyway, it's just a little, sure. a little, a little thing there yeah, I can mention. Um, one of the things, another thing I want to talk about is, okay, so we have, um, 
Um, I don't review this because I'm a street photographer, right? So <laughs> kind of hard to carry that around. Yeah, and be unobtrusive. I mean, I did weddings, I did sports. I see the advantage of this, and we talked about how this is for a lot of guys. This is a DSLR replacement, Correct. and so there's guys with with the Nikon's and Canons, you know, 5D Mark III's or whatever, and they want to go mirrorless. Right. These are the to me, you know, uh, 24 80, uh, whatever 80 70, to 2 75 to 210. 210, yeah, numbers. like these two lenses make sense, and then you have all the primes in between, right? Mm -hmm. But um, uh, so this is the big difference. So there is no image stabilization on this, but, Correct. but there is on this. Yep, up right? to five and a half stops, which means that you can actually shoot with shutter speed. Speeds, five and a half stops. Quite a bit lower, and, yeah. And still maintain preventing camera shake. Yes. As we talked about a little earlier off camera was the fact that this doesn't help minimize your subject blur, yes. but it does help prevent for if you have uh, shaky hands. Yes, it, it corrects for your shakiness, not not for the shakiness of the subject that right. you're shooting. Exactly. And so keep that in mind when you're trying to compare uh, these two lenses, the 1655 or the standard 1855. Correct. You do gain that, whatever it is, two and a half, three stop advantage three on this lens. Three, three stop. Three stops on the yeah, it, uh, it doesn't correct your subject, so you're shooting horses or dogs jumping up and down, it doesn't fix yeah, that. An eighth of a second shooting a baby is not going exactly. to Exactly. And in fact, on a tripod, they actually, a lot of photographers will tell you you should turn off the, uh, yeah. the image stabilization because it's trying to correct for something that's not shifting. Correct. You can actually get some blur in the image. So it actually will induce blur. It, in, it, it will induce blur, exactly. So you turn that off on the tripod. So anyways, uh, I had a question. I'm not sure if Billy was able to give you the answer, but <laughs> so people have been talking about this, uh, Gord. Yeah. Why, why are these two lenses? Did, did Billy get back to you? I'm just checking my phone because I don't think I, I've, I don't have a message back. But if you can see this, there's, there's this red designation. The red designation. You know, compared. Canon has the L series. Uh, Minolta had the, the the little gold ring, and then it went to the Sony, and they still had the little gold ring. Right. Uh, Nikon has their own way. I think they have a gold ring. Kind of means pro. Now my assumption is that this that there's no literature out yet that explains why. Right. But you mentioned there's one thing that makes these there's, two lenses unique. Well, these two lenses are the first in our arsenal that actually have, have the nano GI coating, which is a real significant scientific term, which basically helps to minimize ghosting and flare, particularly when the sun's coming in off the off of angles. So my guess is that either there's two things that this could be. One is that it, they both have the nano GI coating, something that none of our other lenses have yet, as well as the fact that they're f2.8. So because they are our premium speed lenses, that could be the designation as well. I know you're pretending that you don't know the answer, but, <laughs> but some things you just can't. So without you saying anything, my guess is there might be an f300, f2.8 equivalent or 400 f2.8. You don't have to answer, but obviously there's everything from the X Pro 2, which Greg acknowledged it. It's not if it's coming out, but when. Right. And you had mentioned later in the year, if, if it would come out this year, it would be later in the year. Right. And there's not that there's a lot of secrets with Fuji, but you guys are working on a lot of cool things. We have some very unique things that are coming like, to market. Like the sensor, you talked a little bit about that Fuji, Panasonic, organic. Yep. What, what was that you mentioned there's there? There's some co-development of a uh, sensor that Fujifilm and Panasonic are working together. So that rather than having traditional dye uh, layers over in front of the photodiodes, yeah. we actually will have an organic material in front there. Wow. And so that's uh, there's been some challenges in the production of that. So yeah. once that rolls around, we're going to see an entire new page of sensor technology. And that's something that Fujifilm has really been at the leading edge of. With, of course. Uh, going back to our super CCD cameras from yeah. uh, the old uh, s uh, five pro series yeah, of cameras. Yeah, it actually had a, the F mount on there, wasn't it? Yeah. It took the Nikon lenses. It, I'm Japanese, so I'm sorry, I say Nikon, not Nikon. Absolutely, but well that's, anyway. that is the proper pronunciation yes, it is. of it, of course. Yes, Everyone yeah. here in Canada and North America tend to call yes, it Nikon, and yeah, every yeah. now and then I catch myself, yeah, yeah, yeah. especially when I'm talking about Nikkor lenses. Yes, exactly, exactly. So yes, and that was where, so coming back to our sensor, we've in, come up with some rather unique uh, sensor designs over yeah. the years, and that's what really sets our cameras apart to a large extent. For example, these two cameras, there's no optical low-pass filter. Yes. So at that point, you're actually maximizing the resolution that that 16 megapixel sensor is able to Because everyone's get. using that Bayer format, which has been around since the late 70s, invented Correct. by Kodak, by whatever, Sir William Bayer, whatever his name was. Yep. You could wiki that up. Mr. Bayer, yeah. Mr. Bayer, yeah. But, uh, and we talked a little bit about that. There's very few 
companies that actually manufacture their own sensors. Right. Like, I don't think Nikon makes any of their own sensors. I could be wrong. And a lot of companies, they just basically buy from, I think Sony's probably the number one sensor maker in the world. Canon makes some of their sensors. Other ones, they buy from Sony. Yeah. Um, but, and of course, you may have some of the oddball ones, but your, your X-Trans. A lot of our X-Trans sensors are designed in-house. And, yes. You know, we're one of the, the last man standing, if you will, on the film side of things. So we're one of the few manufacturing companies that can make everything from film to paper and prints. And, and optical glass. Between, you optical don't optical buy the glass, glass from anyone else. You actually have a cool video on your, on your website that shows the, the there's, a, there's, a, there's a hand polishing stage. There's a machine, machine stage and there's a hand stage, yeah. right? And all hand inspected Absolutely. with the masks and the hats. So that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So um, what I'm going to do is um, just quickly here. So we, we know the advantage and the disadvantage of um, of this, uh, actually, you know, that 16 to 55, one of the things I really appreciated about it was, um, I, I was surprised at how much I would like it, meaning the F2.8 is not a big deal for me right. because from 2.8 to F4, um, it's only a one-stop difference. Mm -hmm. So to me, for that one stop, why would I carry all this extra weight? But I actually found that 16, like, you know, the standard 1855, I always wished it started at 16. Right. I started with the Panasonic LX3 as my point and shoot, and that also had a 24 mil wide angle equivalent. This is 16. That's a fantastic, and I'll post this on my, on my review on my blog, but even at 2.8 at 16, mm -hmm. the out of focus area, you can actually, I didn't think you would be able to notice it, but there's a noticeable difference when you shoot that. And all the way through that range, if you leave it at 2.8 and you shoot, if you like bokeh, it is bokehlicious with, 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 <laughs> this, with this lens. Yep. If, you, if you need that effect, yep. right, it's, it's beautiful. And also I noticed um, AF is faster. I actually swap between, so I put this 1655 on the XE2, mm -hmm. checked autofocus, and then put it on this, checked autofocus. And then I switched the lenses that are on, on the 1855 and swapped bodies. So what I noticed, I'm not sure if you have the exact numbers, but I felt that it was 10% faster autofocus than this on the equivalent bodies. Right and 10%, 50% more accurate. Mm -hmm. But then when I switched bodies, the, XE, the X-T1 also focused more accurately and quicker than the X-E2. So if you make the combination of this lens with this body, right. um, you're almost getting 15, 20% more accurate shutter um, focus speed. Right. It's, it's quieter and faster. So actually this performs much, quite a bit better than this lens. So it's not just the f2.8. Right. You're getting the wider angle, right? Um, and you're getting faster, more accurate autofocus. Right. This actually has a double core linear motor. Yes. So it means it's going to react a lot faster. Exactly. The 50 to 140 actually has a triple core. Oh wow. Focus. So it's even faster than many other uh, equivalent. Like we actually have a 55 to 200 equivalent. Yeah, yeah. Which would be the same. You know, where this lens stops. Yeah, yeah. It carries on. Yeah. Um, the 50 to 140 is is that much faster again compared to the uh, 55 to 200. Exactly, so if you need the performance, so this is sort of my conclusion is, this is an awesome lens. If you can afford it and you don't mind the weight and you come from Canon 5D Mark III with the 24 to 70 28 L series, this will feel like nothing. Correct. You're, you're probably saving about half a pound at least, and that's my guess, mm -hmm. half a pound by buying this. So it's lighter. But if you do come from film, you come from Leica, you come from, you want everything light, or you come from point and shoot and you're building up to a mirrorless, then the XE2 yeah. with either Prime or the standard 1855, which is a super sharp uh, lens with the image, the optical stabilization. Let's do a weigh-in on this. We, I have the pancake, so let's say someone, because it's the same sensor in the X-T1 and the X-E2. Correct. So you're going to actually, technically, all things being equal, the image quality will be the same. Correct. Faster AF, more accurate AF, but the image itself is the same. Correct. But if you really want to go light and you want the interchangeability, you can get, this is a 27 pancake, right? F2.8, which is still fast. Yep, it's equivalent to 43 millimeter. Yes. Rather than saying pancake, we prefer compact prime. Compact Usually prime. when you say com when you say pancake, you would uh, indicate that it's sort of derogatory. And okay. fact, it's a bit of a step down. <laughs> I like pancakes. Can we call it a waffle? <laughs> okay, yeah. waffle. <laughs> so well, only if you're in the, was it the magic land of far, far away and donkeys making waffles in the morning. So there you go. So it's it's 0.9 kilograms. All right. Or sorry, what am I saying here? 0.9. No, 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 no. Sorry. Let me let me do this again. <laughs> Let me read this here. It's 0.4 kilograms with a lens, right? Or that's, um, under, that's un a it's under a pound. Mm -hmm. And if, if you feel this, I mean, that there is no weight to that thing. And it's flush. Yeah. It's completely flush. So this flush. would be very similar to our X100 series of cameras. Yes. The fact that you've got a fairly small camera, 
you know, about the same focal length. Yes. Maybe not as uh, sharp because you, you get a little bit sharp, uh, faster lens with the X100 series. I find the F2 wide open though. In the center, it's sharper on the edge. It's it's not as sharp. That's well, sharp as a two way. That's my opinion. Sorry. We'll have to fix that. Well, <laughs> but now you've got the ability to have an interchangeable lens camera yes. with that same compact yes. size. So that's a great street shooter. So this uh, is the first time. Shooter. Maybe I'm going to borrow this from you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this I've never actually I've never played with this compact with, with this lens. But and this weighs nothing. Yeah. This is uh, actually I might think. Let's do okay. So we'll do. I'll do weighing on the X100T. But this is, if anything, it's maybe a little bit lighter. But it's almost almost no difference. I don't remember what the weights end up. Yeah, with. but that's that's. Don't try to memorize any of the numbers because they're always changing. That's right. So we're we're getting close to. I'm not sure what the time limit here is. I said 15:20. This feels like 25 minutes. Yeah. But uh, anyways, we're gonna we're sure. gonna we're gonna cut this short. Sure. So basically, overall, the the XF1655 comes in at 1200 US. The stat, the kit lens is 600. So it's twice the price, but you get an amazing performance. A wider range uh, focus and um, weather sealed, and, and and it's weather sealed exactly. So it's a great combination. It's a great combination. XT1. Exactly. Competition: Sony A7, their Next or A series. Yep. Um, they don't have the lenses that you guys have. So to me, the, the Fuji well, is a better choice. We've got a bit of a jump on them because uh, just a couple of days ago they introduced more lenses for their full frame. Yes, version. I saw that. But again, we've got that step. So that's nice, and they're really expensive. <laughs> I saw the prices on that. Yeah, and we've got actually a couple more lenses coming throughout through uh, the rest of the, the calendar, yes. year, including a 16 millimeter f1.4. Yes, yes, weather sealed. As well as yeah. a 35 millimeter f2. Exactly. So we've got to step up on them for uh, for the lenses. And again, you are dealing with full frame, so therefore you have to have the size of the glass to be able to have that coverage of the full frame. So exactly. an f2.8 lens with that equivalent focal length will be much larger yes. than what we have already. Exactly. So that's something where. Um, uh, and then you go down to micro four thirds. Yes, the we talk about that. size on that. And a lot of us, in, that are coming from film school, feel that the APS-C is a good compromise, if you will. So yeah, you're getting it's also two by three. The aspect ratio is what we're used yeah, to, yeah. right? With our, with our versus, versus four by three, which is odd for me. I'd rather just go square. That's me. Yep. And that's why I don't review micro four thirds. I have nothing against the resolution of the lenses or anything. It's fantastic, but right. I'd always be cropping it two by three, yep. personally. But uh, anyways, I'm going to cut it short because man alive, this is a much longer than I thought. I sh that just means I have to have you <laughs> more often, okay? So you promise to come on to more videos? Absolutely. Because Greg and Billy said they'll shoot with me, but they're in Toronto. Yeah, it's a little it's a tough long, to do long way. Distance, so, so a long way fist bump. Exactly. So Gord, thank you so much. I always do my click, click. Um, so what you can do is you can put this around, Okay. all right? And I want you to actually take a picture of, of our camera guy, HZ, all right? So we're going to end this video. We're going to both aim it at HZ, yeah. all right? My cinematographer all right so ready so thank you for watching and we're gonna cut it click click